<laughs> okay, hi. Um, so we're going to talk about design and about the branding work that we've done, about the situation. So let me start off. Um, basically, I've been at Suzu again now for almost two years. Um, we came into a situation where there was little or no uh, information damn, available. What's that? No, I'm not going to take it. So we came into the situation where there's little or no information available. Um, basically, you've got a logo that's quite out of sync with the current SUSE logo. So there's a SUSE brand and there's an open SUSE brand, and they were both at one time very strong, and now over the years they've kind of slowly f spread apart. And the open SUSE brand is very, it was very confusing for us to find um, official elements or important elements which we could easily include in a new brand campaign. So the idea, what we needed to do as soon as possible was to create a new campaign of branding materials um, without any designer <laughs> to actually do it. So we uh, built a design team, part of it for OpenSUSE, part of most, a lot of it for SUSE as well. We have lots of products that we work on, um, but part of it is for OpenSUSE. And we started off um, with very little input, I would say. Um, we've identified a lot of problems with the brand as it is. Um, so we know long term, I think, where we want to go. And what we'd like to do is, so Svezdana, our wonderful new designer from the design team, uh, has been working mainly on OpenSUSE until now. Um, she's done a bunch of this uh, new branding stuff that you've seen, and everybody's free to take whatever you want. So all the stuff, there's also more downstairs. There's USB sticks and stickers and boasters and flyers and all the good fun stuff that you want. And I will warn you that if you don't pay attention during this presentation, I'm going to throw things at you. I've got nice soft things to throw at you. I've got wonderful things to throw at you. Ooh, look at that. See, that worked really well. Sorry, I didn't mean to hit you. Um, but yeah, so that's going to be your punishment. So yeah, keep up. So this is Svezdana, and she's going to talk about what she did. And at the end, we'll go over some stuff about how we're going to move into the future and where we want to go long term. Hello, uh, my name is Svezdana. Um, it's quite hard to pronounce. <laughs> so yes, I'm the guilty one for some of the posters, banners, and some of this small stuff that you see around. Um, as Ken said before, when um, I started to work like six months ago, something, uh, I had a task to <coughs> define um, some branding rules uh, for OpenSUSE. So I did a bit of um, investigation. <laughs> uh, I was trying to see what OpenSUSE did so far, what was the uh, material that they used, and I had quite open field to act. So I tried to implement some bit new stuff, not just to use um, chameleon and green color, but also to, to, uh, to add something <laughs> new. Um, when uh, it's coming to brand uh, things related to boot uh, boxes, uh, I mean to boot things that should be <laughs> uh, that should be sent to events, um, there are few things that should be considered and um, how to, to to create nice and how constant look and to come to recognition. So. Yep. Colors. The first thing, um, it's the first or somewhere in the middle, it's, uh, so, sorry, yeah, uh, it's choosing the color. So as I said, uh, I decided not only to use very famous green color, but also to add something a bit different. And um, um, I uh, also learned that um, in the past, uh, there was also very, I would say, important was black color. So I also tried to, to somehow avoid this and use, let's say, some other darker color, which is everything, not the black, yeah? So uh, the colors are very important stuff for uh, any kind of brand. Um, this is the way how you show uh, your personality, the, the brand personality, and um, uh, it gives um, constant look and uh, it's like very uh, important to bring us to recognition so that anywhere else, anywhere else when people see us, when, see, when they see our stuff, they, they will immediately recognize OpenSUSE. Um, in this case, um, um, we have primary and secondary, second, secondary sorry, uh, colors. 
Um, so we have the green one, very famous one, and uh, the dark blue uh, color and uh, something between blue and green. And the secondary colors are mostly used just to either bring attention uh, to some elements or just to show this diversity uh, uh, to, to the main elements. And of course, there is always black and white thing for the people, maybe let's say some kind of advice for the people who are printing stuff. Uh, when doing something with the black color, uh, you should use um, rich black color, which is a mixture of 50% of each CMY and 100% of K. Okay, next slide. The next thing is typography. Ty typography is science. <laughs> So <laughs> using and choosing the right fonts, it's very important and it should be choose very carefully. Uh, it's important that we not use too many fonts, uh, that we are not mixing too many fonts. Uh, also, we have to think in the future, so we are not using just the font which is modern now, but something that it will be also modern uh, in uh, um, in the future. So here I will not go through details which font is used for that because this um, presentation will be available for people to download and they can use it. So you can see I use two kinds of fonts and uh, combined together they can give very nice um, yep. graphic elements. So the Yes, yes. They can be downloaded on, on Google Fonts, yeah. And that was one thing that was very important to us. When we started doing the exploration, we started using proprietary fonts because there's just a much larger set of proprietary fonts. We realized in the end that we always will stick with the open source font. These are all Google Fonts that we've downloaded. I've checked with legal, so everything's good. They're freely redistributable. One of them is now in the installer as well, so. That's... That is the bigger problem, is the internationalization of some of these fonts. The, uh, sorry, the question was, are we using open source fonts or are these proprietary fonts or how, where are we getting these fonts from? So they're not proprietary fonts. They are open source fonts. We've, they're very widely used open source fonts. So as far as the internationalization goes, it, there is internationalization there, but not for everything possible. Um, realistically, if you look at fully internationalized fonts, open source fonts, there's a lot of really bad ones and then like Ubuntu and that's about it, so. Thanks. Um, okay, so graphic elements. Um, we can move. <laughs> so these are the main graphic elements used in this campaign. So we have chameleon, since chameleon is almost like I don't know, God <laughs> here, so it's very important person uh, among community and generally in open source and SUSE. So um, my idea was to create, let's say, something fun and, and more um, interesting, uh, not just to use logo everywhere. Um, so I tried to, to draw some chameleon according to some my imagination, <laughs> and this is how it <laughs> look. Um, besides that, uh, it's also that's um, important that for uh, sometimes uh, um, you use some old ideas which you had before, but you just uh, let them sit in your computer, and sometimes it can bring something like this, because this, uh, can you just return? <laughs> yeah. Uh, for example, um, this pattern of hexagons, um, I, may, I created this before, I created chameleon, and actually it's turned out that it's a very good uh, thing to, to combine it with chameleon to get this um, fun and interesting um, animal. <laughs> uh, then bulb, so why I use bulb? Um, the, as I understand, and as I understood when I arrived here, uh, that the main goal of um, open source is to bring people with good idea, and the first thing, what you, the first thought, what I has when you said idea is the bulb. So I created this stylized bulb, very simple, uh, but it should bring attention exactly with this simplicity. 
uh, I merged together with the Connect word, so it's basically inviting people to connect to open source community and to bring their idea together with, our, with ours so that we can work together or something bigger and improve it. Okay, next one. Um, for the other elements, um, <laughs> uh, these are, uh, let's say, more, um, these are the first things which I made and they are more rely on the, on the previous things that were done by community. Uh, so very, very simple. Uh, but again, uh, using the motto that OpenSUSE have, like very important motto, mottos for OpenSUSE. So I try to visual, visualize them and to, again, bring attention just by this simplicity. So uh, shaping the text, it's really, let's say, a difficult part. So I try to make more interesting by creating the cubes, actually the cube. And um, it's important that all of these three uh, things are rely on each other <laughs> as uh, as the the parts of the cube and the three icons which are showing the um, open source motto and they are like continuously um, we didn't discard totally uh, the previous designs from from the community. Okay, next one. Layouts. Okay, so when we, uh, whatever we create for um, printing, in this case for the boot boxes, uh, it's very important when designing, we need to pay attention on proportion, we need to align elements in the middle, we have to follow, let's say, some kind of rules so that we bring attention to the things which we create. And there are certain rules which has to be followed to have good design. For example, for brochures, uh, I try to avoid uh, using this typical um, format of brochure, so uh, I created a bit um, different style. As you can see, they are like smaller and very <laughs> different folds. So, um, yeah, thank you. The other thing is um, <laughs> when. Uh, when uh, creating uh, either brochures or the posters, it's um, important to, uh, in this way I'm uh, saying about the print stuff, it's important to keep um, rules like, for example, you have to keep a 0 0.2 centimeter bleed around uh, documents to avoid having empty space because you never know what will come from the print and where the cut line will be. So this is important part. You should not stick your text or um, important elements very near to the borders or to cut lines. Keep it middle, keep it simple. <laughs> it's uh, okay, we can go next one. Yeah, so this is exactly what I said about brochures. So when you have uh, uh, color background or the picture in the background, you should always let these colors or the pictures go uh, outside of your documents. So uh, once they are like cut, we will not have ugly white lines or something like this. We can go next. So this is just an uh, overview of how the elements are aligned. As you can see, they are like all centered. It's very important that when you are uh, creating the um, series of posters uh, uh, that all primary elements uh, like web address or the logo, they are always in the same position, but the elements which are on the poster, they, of course, they can be differently uh, aligned. Next one. This is, again, the same uh, thing. Uh, the importance of having this bleed, uh, it's also shown here. So it's on the posters, brochures, whatever you print, it's, in, it's important that you have this bleed. Next one, uh, promo material. Um, so when you are applying your logo or whatever on a 
uh, other promos, promo materials, um, you should keep it in the way that it's visible, that is, uh, made, you have to maintain visibility and proportion, and uh, uh, oh, very often it's where the logo will be, it's defined by the printers, so sometimes you cannot include whatever you want, but how they <laughs> say. <laughs> okay, next one. Co-branding. Um, so the elements which we created, uh, they can be used in some um, other events. Some um, you can put, uh, you can use it for some local happenings. So they can be reused again. Uh, I would not recommend um, using I don't know all of these three elements on one poster or something like this. But you can change it. Um, in a way, I, I took as example uh, this conference, so you can replace tagline with uh, uh, with the conference or with a, with a, another event that you have. Uh, so this is example how it can be done differently. Yeah, this is the this. Also, um, it's important to maintain this. Um, the same and constant looks just to not to lose this uh, consistency. For example, this poster is also an uh, example how uh, co-branding can be done by using the, the colors, defined colors, uh, fonts, typography. So this is, let's say, example of co-branding, so how you can use it. That's it, yeah, always changing, always fun is the one of, uh, of um, posters, it's one of the lines in the posters, so, cool. yeah, that's okay. it, some questions? Sorry, me again, um, so you've said which fonts you're using, Yes. Are you going to be changing the font used for OpenSUSE? So if you look on the banner behind you, it's still currently in fifth leg. So yep. where it says OpenSUSE in green there next to conference. Well, are you going to be changing that? Or are you going to keep that as it is, as if it's an image rather than text? Uh, well, uh, I would <laughs> thank. You. I would rather slowly move towards the using the same font everywhere. A fifth leg font is the font which is used uh, in logo, but it doesn't have to be used everywhere. So the text and the taglines and the, the, the main lines it, it, they don't they don't have to be in 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 the, in the same uh, in the fifth leg font. So it would be perfect if we slowly go in this direction. And there is a can. So. And I think it's important that we note that, like I said in the beginning, um, we came into this and basically we had a logo with this font. That's about it. And then you had some of the marketing material that you saw. Different stuff over the ages, over the years, what's new, what's bad, who knows. Um, so other than the logo we, and colors, green and a logo, we had very little to go from. So the first thing that we did is that is we tried to... You have to realize that this is a campaign that is the first step in the direction of maybe where we want to go. It's not a definition of this is how everything's going to be from now on. So this is not intended to say this is the new brand of, Su of OpenSUSE, but rather this is the new branding elements used in the first campaign in the path of leading to some time we're going to need to do some kind of rebranding or refreshing in the brand, uh, defining elements, defining things more, more seriously, because it makes it easier for everybody who's not a designer to be able to just take something that's defined and use it if it's well defined and if it's well thought out. So are you looking at potentially having, um, historically, as you said, the OpenSUSE brand and the SUSE brand were pretty much joined at the hip. Yeah. There was very yeah. little differentiating. Yeah. And, and honestly, historically, the Open Suzy brand was open, tacked on in front of the Suzy brand. Um, now that Suzy brand has changed, so the logo itself has, itself has changed, and the Open Suzy hasn't. And um, 
because I work for Susan, I can't say I'm going to officially do anything because I'm not the person to decide any of that. But I would say in my sense, in my, in my years in the community, is it makes no sense to have something like this detracting. It detracts from open Susan and it detracts from Susie, in my opinion. To have two things that are very similar but different and slowly becoming more similar, it doesn't build two strong brands. So I think that long term, it would be in Open Susie's interest to rebrand itself really strong. Really, and actually, if it was my opinion, I'd say differently than Susie. But that's another issue. So any other questions for Sazdana? Otherwise, I'll go on through. So the point of this whole thing is we made this branding stuff. Um, and we created these materials. Basically, we had a deadline to spend a lot of money to, to get these materials available for everybody to use. So we had to do it very quickly. Um, and we started defining these things. And at the same time, we want to define them for ourselves and for everybody. But we also want to make them available for everyone to use. We want to, This is supposed to help you make branding stuff to make a poster or make a sticker or whatever else and not just to find things that make it harder for you. So in doing so, like you see this poster that we made, which is really nice, which we're going to make, everything is available for download. The poster itself, the presentation itself, we're also going to make all of our branding elements, all the, the little community, the Geeko or the communion, comic chameleon thing, uh, the light bulb, all the elements that we have in there will be available as SVGs in a format that everyone can use, the fonts are available. And what I've done is I put together a website. <laughs> just, it's just a file right now on my hard drive. But I kind of just wanted to get an idea of how I would make a brand website. Um, so what we have is something, again, it's very similar. You see the colors in a very bad way with no break between the text and that. Okay, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> well, see, I was doing this full screen on my, com on my monitor, and now it's a smaller resolution, and it it's, doesn't matter. It's, it's responsive. Um, it is, it really is. So I, I talk about the colors and to tell you kind of what to use. Interesting is that I found a quote. I was trying to find quotes for all of these. So one thing I found was a quote from Pablo Picasso that says, they'll sell you thousands of greens, Veronese green and emerald green and cadmium green, and any sort of green you like, but that particular green, never. And it makes little sense, but it's wonderful. It's Pablo Picasso, come on. Um, oops. So... Uh, we've got the whole typography thing. It explains how to use it. And important to note is that is that typography is really something you could do your entire life. It's really hard. It's not something for uh, an inexperienced person to do very well without really a lot of luck. So typography is hard. Um, and there are some things that like when you guys want to take this stuff and do something of your own, we want to be able to eventually want to have an email address where you could talk to us so that we could give some feedback so we could look at what you've done and say, hey, I think because we're four designers who do this professionally, you know, five days a week, this is our opinion. Whether a person takes it or not is something else. But that's the whole point of this website is to show you this first direction and give you a place of contact to get your information, to get you know what you need, to find the elements that you need, download them, be able to change your stuff. And then if you want to talk to us to say, hey, you know, this is what we've done, what do you think? And you know, any way we can improve it. Um, just like you see the elements, it's always about the connection between elements. It's never about singular elements, and that's where people mistake design, is that design is a, is, a, is a whole thing, and it's not just the pieces. So having one really good piece and another really good piece and putting them together does not make more than two really good pieces. It might make something really bad. <laughs> um, yeah. So we got a little explanation. Oh, this really sucks, the responsive. This is great. I not, did not expect this. But you see all the pieces, and you see explanations for everything. Um, like the bulb is used to connect ideas. The whole thing is you can take your ideas and connect with the community, and that's what we were trying to express by using this bulb. It's a very simple idea that one can use again and again. Um, we've got explanations for layout. You see everything, how we did what we did, and then you can see here like you've got this x value, and this is 1.8x 1 1 and 6.4x. So you could take this, change it up using the same ratios that we used, and you'd get the exact same quality results. Um, so this is what we want to give to everybody. And then we're showing again this co-branding idea. I know this is, we should have done it for this conference if we were going to do it for this conference. But um, yeah. So you see all these different things. And again, everything is available as a download. There was, wait, 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 wait let's go back up. 
That's the sound of going back up. Oh, come on. So here, uh, you see that there's a download button, which must work because the button's there and it lights up when I go put my mouse over it. <laughs> um, okay, so that being said, I will go on to one thing. So you, the whole point of this of this thing was for you to be able to use, for other people to be able to use this without having to rethink design. So, basically, if you had this, yeah, you want to make this graphic, okay? Whoops! Don't do that. Go away. Go away. Okay, so things Meatloaf would do for love. He will clearly do anything for love, but he won't do that. So you've made this graphic, and now you think, you know, I think I've done it right. I mean, I've explained very clearly that he'll do anything, but he won't do that, right? You know, you've got a nice readable text. It's on a white background. I can clearly see what the information's there. But then maybe you want it to be branded as well. So you would look at our website, and therefrom you would make something like that. Yay, it's kind of branded. It's better, and it matches more than it would if you didn't follow these rules. So... And that is it for us, I think. Um, we're available for questions. We're here all week. <laughs> um, <laughs> so if anybody needs anything, if anybody wants to talk anything, don't hesitate. Yeah. And again, me. Um, I fed you these questions beforehand. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for asking them. No. Yeah, invoices in the post. Um, so would you guys be willing to sit down and um, help create something following along your campaign idea. So for instance, a lot of people are using Reveal.js now for presentations, whatever else. Mm -hmm. It would be nice to be able to have it branded. Yeah, I think definitely. I think what we need... Other, other tools like that. So I don't know, maybe not necessarily a WordPress theme or whatever, but those kind of things that people would quite happily reuse, easily reuse, and it gets the brand out much wider um, and sh slowly but surely people go, ah, oh, clearly they do something with OpenSUSE or whatever. I mean, realistically, if you're going to go to give a presentation about OpenSUSE, no matter where you go, it's a lot more work for you to take something in plain and empty and try to create your own template and think something up than it is to take a well-created template and adapt it to your needs. I realize that everyone's going to adapt things, so these are guidelines, and that's why we don't call them rules. Other, at a company, this would be a rule, and you'd follow it whether you liked it or not, whether it made bad results or not. But we're not saying that. So yeah, looking at something like Reveal.js for, a, for a, a presentation, maybe like we're using uh, Bootstrap for all of our websites, maybe some you know a template for that, so you could say, if you want to make an OpenSUSE website, this is how it looks. Um, in baby steps <laughs> you know this is why we've started here i mean this is the first presentation that we've even done in front of any of the community we haven't we've kind of stayed out of the community light because we had a date to get this stuff printed by and it was a lot of stress to deal with finding the companies who would print things in time with the right kind of invoices and then getting the invoices you don't know there was a lot of work behind this it wasn't just make some artwork and then say print it off it didn't work like that this brand, it's not only to say people, I mean, it's not to say people what to do, but it's shorten the time of choosing the colors, the fonts, so they, they will immediately know, okay, I have, I don't know, two different fonts which I can use. I will pick this one or I will pick that one, and that's it. You spend five minutes, so you don't have to go through fonts, try, print, see how it looks, if it is better this one or that one. So so this is very to, how to, to help people to to... Uh, to make their best in shortest time. And this is just first step, so slowly we are going in, in, in that direction that everything is. At the same time, we also have discussed, I think there's a question back up here. At the same time, we also discussed creating uh, like maybe open office file or Libre office files or SVG files where a person can take the poster that we made and just change the text you know, the right font is already there. You'd have to have those fonts installed on your system. Yes, I agree. Um, but given, yeah, I think that would be really nice. Hey, I have the microphone. 
so just a few comments. Um, yeah. So the um, the website, which is currently a file here on Ken's machine, is going to go live on OpenSUSE.org in the near future, and it is a starting point. Okay, it is a starting point. So uh, please, anybody who is part of the you know um, artwork that we see here and that has been done for other events, uh, don't feel stepped on your toes. We have you know we have great resources now. Um, they've done a wonderful job of giving us a starting point and everybody please take that opportunity. Uh, the design team is more than willing, as, as Ken said earlier, there will be an email address where you can go and say, this is what I've done, can you help me make it nicer and better? Uh, so all of that is there and this will be a starting point. We will hang this website that, we current, that, that you've seen off of opensuse.org so uh, everybody can access it. There's also work going on in finding an easier place for designers to collaborate. Uh, currently all of our artwork is on GitHub and while this works really great for us that write code, it sucks for people that design stuff, right? Because although there's really only five or six commands that you need to know to work with GitHub, if that's not your mindset, it really doesn't work. And so there's stuff going on that we're talking about to make it easy for everybody in the, in the design team and that's helping with the artwork to collaborate and you know make our brand better. It's also the GitHub repo takes a couple hours on a really good internet connection to even pull it all. So right. it, it's very, very unusable. And it's also a matter of finding the information, what's the actual latest stuff. So right now it's kind of a mess. And we would like to take part in that conversation as to what is needed. Um, I think because we are four professional designers who do this stuff you know, for years and years and years, we probably have a very good idea of what we think is right. Um, so we want to, this is like basically our first step to say to the community, we're ready to help, we're here. And until now, we had to get this stuff done. We had to get it out the door. It had to be printed. So there was very little time for us to have any discussions with community members. But now is definitely the time. And from here on out, everything that we do for, with or for OpenSUSE will be discussed openly. And like I said, like having a file where a person just goes in and t changes some text is a really good idea because then Ludwig could make posters from now on. So someone would come say, hey, Ken, I need a poster. And I'd say, yeah, go talk to Ludwig. You know, he does the posters here. <laughs> you like that, don't you? <laughs> yeah, so from now on, if you got any questions, in fact, the email address, I think, is lnussel at suzaday. Um, just send it to him. No. So, yeah, we'd like to help you, and we definitely want to be able to help. And what you see, I think, in the future is also that our team, because we have four designers who have all different sets of uh, competencies, you will see that, like, Svezdana, for instance, is really good at print design. We have another designer who says, I don't like print design. I don't want to do print design. She doesn't do print design. She's in another area. So we have people who do different things. And we want to be able to help in all different areas. Um, so slowly but surely, you'll see us starting to become a little bit more active in different areas. Um, we also, we've already created a couple different just fun desktop backgrounds just while we're, you know, playing around and stuff like that. We're going to push that out sometime, hopefully soon. Um, there's two different versions that are done that are very different, that are very interesting. Um, so you'll see more and more from us, but don't take it as uh, any, kind of, any kind of rule or anything. We are just as much community as every other community member out there. It's just, I guess it's easy for us when you say you want to spend 30,000 bucks printing flyers, it's easier to go, you do it, than it is to find a community member to do it. <laughs> okay, so anyone, uh, uh, any other questions? No. Oh, yep. Yeah. And like I said, if anyone has any longer terms, if you feel like you wanted to sit down with us for an hour to help us do anything, whatever, we're here all week, so talk to us. Um, this is kind of a dumb question. I, I don't know why it popped into my head, but uh, is there any recommendation over which way the gecko should face, or can it go both ways? Well, being historically at Sousa, I remember when it used to face the other way. Naturally speaking, I think back in the day, um, the argument was that forward is to the right. So things going to the right is forward looking. I would realistically say that like right now with this Geeko, 
there's problems with it because it's different than the Suzy Geeko now. So it dilutes the Suzy brand and dilutes its, or, or Suzy dilutes this brand or this blue, you know, they dilute each other. Um, there's small differences in them, which is bad. Just bad. It's bad to have two things that are really, really similar and just slightly different. Um, and as far as like just changing the direction of things, I would be very hesitant to do that because that's again one small step that you would take that makes it one further step away from what it is, from what the other brand is. I think that realistically we need to look at the Sousa brand and the Open Sousa brand and differentiate and make a decision as to differentiation. The big thing is that there's copyright and trademarks and. Nah, nah, nah. So it's a really complicated thing that needs to be decided at a higher level. I, and realistically, to rebrand just a community, now this isn't a huge company, this is just a community, to rebrand OpenSUSE would be, for several designers, years of work. So this is not something that's going to happen in six months or a year. I'm talking if I started, if we started today, if our team started today, in two or three years, we would be ready with a new brand realistically and, and that's saying I when I say rebrand I mean really rebrand everything so not you know just change the logo and that's the decisions that we need to make you know what how much of the rebranding do we need to do what what kind of rebranding are we refreshing the brand are we replacing the brand um, and that those are all huge questions that I am scared to ask but I wanted to bring it up here because I think it's very important I say this again and again when we talk about the brand and you'll probably hear me say it every time I talk to you because I think it's very important for a designer right now. It's very hard to come in and know what to do. You see, you got a logo and it's green, and that's the first thing. This is the best part, and you know it's true. When I come up and pull something like this, and this thing is really nice, right? It looks really nice. Take a look at it, and people say, "Yeah, but it's, it's not really green, is it?" So you're telling me that's Susan. So if I just make it green, just any kind of green, just some random green, bright green, then it's Susan, and that's. Interesting, but sad. <laughs> it makes it really hard for a designer to do his job. Because you have green, and you've got a logo that's green. <laughs> so, oh, okay. Um, so, yeah, that's where I think it should go. But what I think is not necessarily what everyone else thinks, and I think that'll be a bigger issue coming up in the future. I, I was just thinking uh, from the orientation perspective, like uh, it, it could potentially have an impact on whether you place it to the left or to the right of some you know, mm. project title or something mm. like that because it might look a bit weird if you mm. have the the gecko facing away from the text or right, that right. kind of thing. But then maybe you don't want you you know, you want it on the left hand side or the right hand side depending on the shape of the text or I'll be honest with you, if it was up to me, I'd rename it I would not name it OpenSUSE. I'd name it like something else and have a completely different, like Geeko Linux and have a completely different logo <laughs> and a completely separate. There is, uh, branding wise, marketing wise, there are no ties. There's no ties between SUSE and OpenSUSE that I can see, that I can clearly see. And I, I know where the OpenSUSE brand came from, but I just think it's outdated now and it's slowly kind of getting decrepit. It's just falling apart. It's, it's not solid anymore and it's not strong. And I think it just hurts both. Ubuntu, su Ubuntu, maybe. We could go for that. Oh, God, coming from me. I'm going to hear about that now for months. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, hi, Mark. <laughs> right. So, okay. Any other questions? Anybody? 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 Anybody want some free marketing stuff? Catch. Meow. Oh, Stefan, you're not quick at all. So you've got all this stuff which you've done for all this wonderful print design. Theoretically speaking, if we accepted some of these guidelines and started using them as a basis for, let's say, the AST installer, would you... Would you think that's a good idea? Would I? Sorry, I, I didn't hear the last part. Would you think it's a good idea if we started using these guidelines to also, in sort of the screen design side of things, yes, to the installer? The I think that we should probably look into it. Have you seen the new installer from Suzu? We have. It's it's kind of... Um, and I think you're going to see more and more of this. Um, one thing that I am going to promise now is that because I've changed the installer in SUSE and I hear that some of that might actually go then back upstream into OpenSUSE, I promise that I will take the theme that I've made for uh, SUSE itself and make an OpenSUSE themed version for it because that's cheap to just change everything and then go, oh, I screwed up your stuff, why don't you fix it? 
So I will change that. Um, yeah, that that's going to be me who has to accept. That. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, I'm just going to you know grep the colors and like said things, and that's it. Um, yeah. Does that answer your question? Okay. Yeah, we got to go pretty soon. We got one more question, then we're done. What do you say? Who has the strongest brand from your perspective from the other Linux distributions? <laughs> that's a loaded question that's not fair that's not fair um actually i worked at canonical previously i don't know if anyone knew that but i worked at suza left and worked for canonical and now i'm working for suza again and having experienced the effort that went on in rebranding uh canonical itself as well as ubuntu it's eye-opening um, if you've never been through that process, you probably can't imagine what it really involves, how much effort it involves to do it that well. Um, yeah, it's, it, this is, everyone sees a logo and they think, oh, you guys probably made like three versions of logos and we picked one and yeah, we're done. It's more like we made 300 versions and then from that we made another 30 and then another 30, you know, so it's a lot of work. Um, and I would honestly say that the work that Canonical did is very, very, very good. The designers they have are very professional. They have a really large team. They're doing a very good job. So, but that's also, again, a company behind something. It's not the community doing it itself. Yay. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.